What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Marvel, a company when we used to talk about Brian back in the days, we used to Marvel can do no wrong. They're perfect. <laughs> now, we never said that, but we held them to high standards because of the things that they were attempting and what they had done. The sort of hype that they created for their films, the money that they keep bringing in. And then you start hearing complaints. Oh, Marvel has this formula, it's getting boring. You know, they don't, they, they control the narrative. Yeah, they control the narrative. It's their story, it's the MCU. They have, they have something, to, they have things to keep in order. Right. Um, and now it seems after the phase three, now we're in phase four and phase four hasn't been that exciting. Brian has had its moments of great stuff, but it almost feels as if they're losing steam as far as giving us something compelling to watch with regards to their characters and probably it's just a lot of stuff is that I, I, what well, I want to say for superhero fatigue, but it's like, you know, they're giving us a lot to think about, especially with this multiverse. And I think honestly, Brian, the reason why they created the multiverse is for the purposes of having the freedom to do a lot more and not have to go back to what were they doing here when this was happening? Why could, you know what I'm saying? So this multiverse gives them a way out. But in doing so, they've created this, although it started off great with Loki and the explanation of the whole thing, now it's gotten a little bit confusing. A lot of, a lot of things to keep in mind, to keep in the database. Um, and now you have Kevin Feige being front and center, making decisions, and some of them not so good. It was something that we, Brian, spoke about in our last podcast regarding the X-Men. Um, Brian, you are more adamant about this than me, but I'm there with you. What the hell is going on with Marvel? What is Kevin Feige thinking? And can you talk about some of the decisions as of late um, that's causing you concern? <laughs> yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a mood about this whole subject because I just feel like I've really, really been disappointed with Doctor Strange two and Thor four, and, and going back to Eternals and even you know I mean Black Widow, I was like all right that's the first one out of the gate I get it but. It's been a rough go, I think. Yeah, yeah. But there's things starting to stand out that I just don't understand. Um, so the first thing is, it's, it's a random place to start, but why does it seem like every time Marvel puts out a project now, the directors are always saying, Kevin told us to do this, Kevin gave us this to do. Kevin was the one who said, put the X-Men animated theme music over the mutant announcement after having already done it in Doctor Strange 2. We never used to get that story, ever. Like, yeah. Kevin Feige got- You think that you think they're throwing him under the bus? Earned all these accolades for 15 years. And to your point, it's not that the MCU was ever perfect. It was that, the MCU's baseline quality was very high. And when there was a misstep, they were very good at recognizing what didn't resonate and course correcting. That was actually in some ways their greatest strength that helped them get to end game. Yeah. And I feel like, but at the same time, it was like Kevin was a, a name. He would get his, he would get his props at like Comic-Con. Directors would say like, oh, you know, he's, he's great to work with. But you never used to get like the specific interaction of like Kevin told us to do this, and he's the only one that knows. And then he's 
what is going on with this? Because the things that are being described, quite honestly, aren't that good. Like yeah. double, like the whole double down on the X Men animated series theme, which I know rubbed you the wrong way. Like that's a rookie mistake to me. Yeah. And like, and the directors just literally put him. They were like, he did it. Talk to him about that. <laughs> and then it was like. Brett Goldstein as Hercules, Taika Waititi. Kevin was the one who cast it. Kevin wanted the scene. This is the way Kevin wanted it shot. You never used to hear this, man. Like, what? Why is Kevin's name in all these guys' mouths when it comes to specific scenes and specific moments that are especially kind of when people don't like him? Yeah, 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 yeah. But when people when people have their voices heard as to yo, I didn't like this, but why this and why? Oh, Kevin, talk to Kevin. That's not good. You buy it? Do you think it's solely him? Well, I mean, why? Why they? I mean, Brian, why would you go out and say Ke it's Kevin if it's not Kevin? You know what I'm saying? Why? If 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 if, if Kevin thinks oh, it wasn't me, why are they call, saying my name? I would be upset, and they would be getting a phone call live on the interview. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I agree. So I don't, I, it's possible that they're still getting those calls, <laughs> you know, but Brian, I think Kevin is thirsty at the second chance of doing the X-Men. And I think he's a bit too excited and not thinking straight. And before, yeah, because he has experience doing X Men films before, perhaps who knows? Perhaps the inter interactions that he had, yo, let's try this, and then we just shut him down. And now he's in a position where you can't shut him down. I don't That's know. a great point. That's a great point on that one. Um, so. Do you think, look, I mean, Kevin Feige is a much bigger deal than he was 15 years ago, um, rightfully so. The greatest, most prolific producer in Hollywood history by the, by the box. Do you think that if you believe these portrayals, do you think he's lost a little bit of connection or touch with like the, the, the pulse of the fan base and the pulse of the audience? Is he stretched is, too thin to really be? I mean, this is a conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've spoken about this in the past. Yo, Brian, Kevin, he has a lot on his plate. How can he do all of this? We, we thought he was a machine. He wasn't real. He's an alien. That he's taking on all these things that are happening at the same time and having his input. Perhaps a result of all of that came to head with Phase Four. Sam Raimi, do whatever you want. Chloe, you're an Oscar winning director. I don't need to worry. James Gunn is James Gunn. Taika, Oscar winning director. Do what you want. Thor Ragnarok was fantastic. Look how much money it made. Do whatever you want. And now X-Men is his thing. And Brian, the thought has flow, um, floated in my head that this may be his last hurrah with the X-Men. To him, this I think this is personal. So, okay, so that's theme number one, like kind of like what's in Kevin's head. Is he, you know, look, no one has a perfect run. I mean, everyone makes everyone makes creative mistakes in Hollywood. Like, is he has he kind of finally, you know, reached the bridge too far? And is he now kind of, you know, coming back to earth or reverting a little bit after this huge run of of success? So that's kind of like point number one. Point number two is what you just alluded to. Who's at the controls? So I thought the you know the Russos kind of came out sort of on board with what we've been saying a little bit that they're not concerned about Marvel because they view phase four as the experimental phase. And there's a lot of new stuff being tried. And they think that's actually ultimately good for the universe, which is 
that's the glass half full. We and, I, and I've talked about that. We've talked about that. But also interesting, I thought, was Ethan Hawke chiming in on this subject without being really asked that about this specifically. Mm -hmm. You know, was asked, he was kind of talking about Moon Knight, and he just, he just threw it in there. I think Marvel Studios, quote, is very actor friendly, not necessarily director friendly. Just kind of left it out there as he, and the interviewer didn't like ask him a follow up, which I think is criminal, mm -hmm. but like just kind of floated that in there, like a little drive by shooting. <laughs> um, so what do you think is really but then like i said we talked about taika do whatever you want but taika give us a movie that's less than two hours what is really going on in terms of this like almost seeming power struggle between the creators and the formula i think this may have, may have to do with Bob Chapek and his reorganization and certain people being in charge of certain things where Kevin was probably left to his own devices. And now that he doesn't have that, possibly, I don't know, maybe. Um, with, I, I, I'm pretty sure Kevin is not like, you got to make it on the tour. I don't, Kevin wants a dope move. But, in so many movies that are two and a half hours exactly i don't know what the hell what, what, and the end game's three hours and it's great like exactly it's like why are we talking about hours here why did why, why where did we start getting these requirements from you know um i think it has something to do with that and possibly kevin feige you know what who knows if that that's what is going in his brain like yo, you know you have the execs now you ha you're being told what to do whereas at a moment you were just do what you got to do and now you're being told what to do like yo i'm kevin feige i don't you know this is one of the you know, I, i'm kevin feige yo. do you know who i am <laughs> this is you can yeah i know who you are <laughs> do whatever you want man <laughs> So I think it has to do, I think it's mentally, I, don't, I, I, I think that's why I feel like right now you're hearing a lot more Kevin because he's involved in the, the X-Men situation. Um, and this is his thing. This is where he gets a chance to do a redo of what he thought the X-Men should be. And this is a very delicate thing that you cannot mess up. And this is something that we've talked about over and over again. You cannot mess up the X-Men. If you do, it's over. So you hit on the elephant in the room. I think this is not being written or talked about nearly enough. And that is Disney's financial objectives and what they might be doing to the MCU and Star Wars as a related matter. This is the, the, the reality is, Remember, Disney was pressured by an activist investor to put more money into Disney Plus over the parks business, over the merchandising, and they, they did it. And during the pandemic, everyone thought streaming was the greatest thing, right? If you were involved with the streaming business, valuations went to the moon. And then they did it. They came crashing back to earth as you know, people kind of like going outside their home still and doing stuff and they don't watch TV 24 seven, especially after being stuck two years at home. Yeah. But Disney went out there and said, we got to get to 200 we got to get to Netflix level subscribers by 2024, 230 million subscribers. And they're over a hundred. They're, you know, they're charging ahead, but Disney knows the only way they can get there is to absolutely bombard you with content original content they can't just rely on the good oldies the classics all that sort of stuff which means i don't care what kevin says publicly everyone associated with marvel is under the gun to max out the productions so that disney can then say look what's coming to disney plus next month and the month after because there is a definite correlation between and Warner Brothers spoke to this. When you send a movie to the theater and then you send it to streaming 45 days later, you get viewers, you can get subs by doing that. 
Mm. You know, Stranger Things, if you look at Netflix report the other day, clearly some people came back to Netflix just to watch Stranger Things season four. Yeah. There is proof that new zeitgeist content gets people to pay money to join a service. So Disney has to be holding these people's feet to the fire saying, you know what? You got to cut a few corners. You got to be a little sloppy. We don't care. Give us more. Give us more. That's great. Thor, Thor Ragnarok reviews aren't, or sorry, Thor 4 reviews aren't as good. Yeah, it's still going to make 700, 800 million for us in the, you know, in the theater. And then it's going to go to Disney Plus and it's going to help us get some. I think this is the most underrated aspect of all this. Yeah. That the quality decline across the board is in part because the parent company is just cracking the whip nonstop to get as much content as possible up on the service. It reminds me of a documentary I saw on Netflix about, um, I think it was Boeing. Um, Boeing was doing fantastic. And then they started caring more about the financials. Then we had problems. You know, quality went down. People were, you know, you know, planes were falling. And when you start thinking about just the money and the financials, and not caring about what really gets people to say the things that they want, the, the good things that they say about you, you, you start having issues. And I think we're, we're, go, we're getting into this, you know, Thor Ragnarok seems like a money grab to me. Thor 4, you mean? Love yeah, 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 yeah. Thor 4, yeah, making Thunder. it less than two hours means more box office showings in a day. More show, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think because of that, Brian, this is the result of that, you know, mediocre VFXs and, 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 and stuff like that is concerning. And it's like, I, I understand people who are, who are, who are, are, are done with Marvel. I understand them. It, it, it just reminds me of, and that's what I mean by Kevin's going to be a good, good soldier and he's going to put a good public face on this, but it just reminds me of like you know Yoda when he's about to die and return the Jedi and he says strong with my with strong am I with the Force but not that strong like <laughs> Kevin's got a boss That's yeah yeah boss. he has yeah, a boss yeah. at the end of the day and there are things even he can't overrule and so I I think it's a I definitely think this is a is a factor and I'm fascinated to see if and when that comes to a head you know we, you know you talked about like could this be Kev, Kevin Feige's last act. Could you see some change? Like I, we know Zaslav's trying to recruit somebody to be his version of that. This is where I start to ask the question about, do you see some of the more senior personnel at Marvel at the MCU start to leave because they're like, wait, we're not cool. Like we're being asked to cannibalize and do things that are, that are, that are causing us to put our names on things that we're not proud, we're not as proud oh, yeah. of creative just watch for it because I feel like it's like the next step in this, in this process. And that feeds into the, the, the next thing, which was this whole VFX flap, right? You had a VFX artist publicly come out and say, Marvel is the worst people to work for in town. They like pay, they don't pay, they work you to the bone. Like, and there's been a lot of critiques. You and I have had them about the VFX the Marvel productions. And now I would say other Disney productions, which is why I think this is connected because the Star Wars stuff like Mandalorian season one, you were like, whoa, this kind of looks like a Star Wars movie. You started remarking early. You were like, wait, the sound's off here. <laughs> we were talking like Luke's face is off there. And then you see some of the stuff in the Marvel shows and you're like, this is kind of sloppy. Yeah, and then this yeah, yeah. artist comes out, trashes Marvel, working conditions, all sort of stuff. But you're like, that all kind of fits. It all kind of fits when it's like all the machine cares about is that there's another show up next week and then not caring about it looking tight and looking revolutionary and looking James Cameron level for visuals. Starting to look like it's, it's starting to look like a yeah, it's starting to look like a Tyler Perry production. <laughs> <laughs> or or back in the days when the uh, uh um uh, the Chinese kung fu movies it used to just pop. Oh my god! <laughs> exactly. Get them out! Get them out! Get them out! Well, if, we, if we start seeing the dubbing being that bad, then we know it. <laughs> it's over. It's over. 
<laughs> oh my god yo but little things like that are you, you know you start when you start noticing things like that you you say to yourself what happened there you know who did nobody care to look at this uh, at the end i mean i do some video editing for 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 other stuff and you know sometimes i miss stuff and and i i depend on someone else to like look at it you know because i i'm looking at because i'm editing it I'm looking at it over and over again, and I can miss them because you know I've seen it all the time. So I I need that second set of eyes to look at it and be like, yo, this right here. If people aren't looking at it and just taking it because we got to get it out, this is DC's chance. I was just about to say, we love the Batman, but that's where the visuals of the Batman stand out more because you're like, it's a different look, but it's a carefully crafted, consistent quality look for two and a half hours plus. And like, yeah. I don't care what you say, like you don't walk out. I mean, it's not a really a VFX heavy movie, but like it's shot in a way that looks expensive. Like it looks classy, right? Like whatever it looks you like of, cinema. Yeah, yeah. That's my point. And it's like, there's stuff in like Doc Strange too, where you're like, y'all finish that scene? Are you sure? <laughs> like, does somebody miss miss a, miss a color or miss a gradient in some of the multiverse? Yeah. There's and like, listen, Marvel's had some VFX stuff in the past earlier on. Like, it's not been their greatest suit, but I think it back then it, it just didn't stand out to me as much for some reason. Maybe because the storytelling was more consistent, I just yeah. forgave it. But yeah, yeah. It, it, it is standing out more. And I think because also you've got product elsewhere. Like to me, the boys always looks good. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's other productions where the quality and the, like we saw the Lord of the Rings teaser. Like, I don't know how idea how good that show is going to be. But it looks. But the money is visible <laughs> in the two minutes. Yo, you think if you don't spend that, I'm not saying that you have to spend this kind of money. But your joint, if we live in this, yo, your joint got to look dope. It got to look dope. If it don't look dope, then we see the quality. Yo, I don't want to go back to CW World, yo. Feels like we're getting there with some of these shows. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, last one for me is one that's really annoying me these days. Because I think it's pure revisionist history. It's, there is this thesis out there that the reason why the mcu is in a slump is because we don't know where we're going we don't have the grand plan that the grand plan will save everything that's going on look i'm 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 as ex i'm as interested as the next person in in the grand plan but it i think it's such a cop out yeah, yeah. Like cop -out. because and i can prove it to you because Let's take Iron Man 1. Let's take Captain America Winter Soldier. Let's take the best of Marvel. And if I said, there's no Avengers movies around them, are those suddenly bad movies because of that? No, they're still great movies. I will argue tooth and nail. I will argue forever if anybody tells me that Winter Soldier was a whack movie or it's not your number one. You got to defend. Yo. Captain, America, yo, when I think of when I see Captain America Winter Soldier, I don't think about the future or the past of the MCU. I don't think about First Avenger. I don't think about the next movie. I don't think about Infinity War, Endgame. I don't think about none of those movies, especially after watching Iron Man. It sure was dope to see uh um what's the guy's name? Um Nick Fury at the end of that film telling you what this was going to be, because that was epic. But Iron Man, the first movie was dope. You know, that's strange too. Wasn't dope, yo. That was one division part two. Thor Ragnarok, yo, yo. When people tell me, yo, they love Thor, they like Thor. I mean, yeah, okay, I, I get it. You like the, the humor, that's your type of humor. But Thor Love and Thunder was whack, yo. It was whack. I didn't like it. Yeah, no, I'm I mean, never gonna watch it again. 
I'll probably watch some of the the the, the scenes with Kristen Bell. I wish they can release the, the deleted scenes. There's there's a good movie there, but yo, don't let it done the in the movie there. Yo, I was like this the whole time. I was like. And then the, there, were certain, there were certain moments that I was like this. And, and that's uh, my point, is that like those movies can stand alone. Yes, it's awesome that they were, you know, in, in Winter Soldier, Stephen Strange's name gets dropped. And like, you, you know, there's Hydra and there's all these connections. It's not what makes the movie great. The movie's great because of the storytelling, the acting, and the execution. That's what makes the movie great. What the grand plan did was it allowed Marvel to get away and paper over some of its mistakes. The grand plan is what got Captain Marvel to over a billion dollars of global <laughs> box, which when it wasn't that great a movie, the grand yes. plan didn't make the good movies good. And that's why I'm like, don't tell me that like, if you knew, if you, it's like, hey, if I knew we were building the Secret Wars, I'd like Doc Strange too. No, you wouldn't. It wouldn't change how you feel about that movie. It wouldn't. So. This is about a slippage in the quality of the storytelling and the execution of what's on screen. It's as simple as that. And let me ask you this, Brian. If this movie was a Wanda, like a Wanda uh, 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 Scarlet Witch movie, let's say it was Wanda, um, I don't know, it was, a, it was a Wanda Scarlet Witch movie, standalone movie, would you have liked it more? Okay, so now you're into something which I think is connected to what we're talking about. Um, I'm thinking back to that show now. And could I take it down? Could I take it down to two hours and make it run? Yeah, that show I probably could because I could probably take the whole first three episodes and make it five minutes. The, the TV sitcom stuff. I could probably leave out a couple episodes entirely. Focus on maybe like episodes five, eight, and then the show. I think I could get that down to two and a half and make yeah. it work. Yeah. So, but but you're on it, which is I am not sure Marvel has a great handle on what exactly should be on the big screen and what should be on the small screen. And I don't mean that from a character standpoint. I mean that from a story standpoint. I mean that from the standpoint of like, they're drawing on the comics to inspire all of what they do. But when you're like connecting WandaVision and Doc Strange 2, I could argue that like, you could take pieces of WandaVision, pieces of Doc Strange 2, put those together, and maybe that's actually a better movie. I don't know that Marvel is hitting at a very high rate in terms of making those decisions. And I think as I've watched more of these shows, one of the things that's made, that made Loki very good, and I think it made Miss Marvel very successful, is that they felt like very well-crafted TV shows, start mm -hmm. to finish. They were structured mm -hmm. and flowed like a television show. I think when Marvel has tried to, ba like Falcon Winter Soldier to me was a good example of this, when Marvel tried to basically say, we're gonna make a six hour movie, that has been less successful. Yeah. And to your point, I think there's probably some content that went on the small screen that maybe should have been a two hour movie. And maybe there's some stuff on the big screen that should have been in a TV series. Yeah. And maybe that's what we're feeling a little bit in the storytelling. Yeah, I, I, I honestly think uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier movie would have been dope um without the i have a dream speech at the end but listen um marvel is listen san diego comic comic con is a very uh what i call it the tipping point of whether or not mcu continues its ascension or continues to stay flat and eventually bottom i don't know i think it's a three-part question. I think it's Comic-Con, D23, and Wakanda Forever. I think if Wakanda Forever is disappointing and Kugler can't pull this off, then I'm going to be like, I don't know where... I mean, you're literally yeah. talking about a guy that's never missed. 
ever yeah, in yeah. his young and brilliant career. If he can't pull this off and it's like a big letdown, I will be, I mean, consider me at that point, like, I don't even know if I, I mean, I'm really worried about X-Men and Fantastic Four, if that lets me down big time. I don't think it will, but I'm just, you know, having said that, we could be here feeling like, oh my God, they're back on track. It was these <laughs> couple events. But I think those three things are really going to be yeah. a big crossroads for, for Marvel for the next, you know, next few years and how we feel about it. Yeah. They need a hit. I hate to say it. We've never been. They need oh, yeah, a big yeah, hit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Thor, Love and Thunder and, and Doctor oh. Strange too are not hits, yo. I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if, if I hurt your feelings. If you're upset, if you call it me, uh, 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 what, what, what was the word that was used to describe my emotions uh, uh, for uh, Thor, Love and Thunder? Bitter was the word that I heard. It's like, yo, it was whack, yo. I'm sorry. It was whack. It wasn't funny. And, uh, Marvel has a lot of work to do, man. And again, I think it's a very interesting question to sort of think about based on what's going on with Kevin Feige and Disney as a whole. Could this be his uh, last stand with the MCU in creating something that I feel that he's very passionate about with regards to the X-Men? I think if he can make that work, I don't think Kevin is going to stick around any longer for that. After yeah, that. what you're talking about, just so the people know, is that Kevin Feige was a junior producer on the Brian Singer X-Men franchise. Yes. Uh, it was one of his earlier jobs in his career, obviously, so he didn't have a lot of say. Although rumor is he wasn't shy about expressing what he thought. That's what the rumor is, at least in retrospect. Um, he's just, yeah, that's, he's why just you, that's why I was saying that. He used to sneak comic books to uh, Hugh Jackman, like, yo, take a look at this Wolverine comic book. This is what you need to be doing. On the low, apparently. That means if he's doing it on the low, that they don't want to hear what he got to say. And this one, he's he's the man. He's the man at this point. So it, it, this, it's going to be a very interesting couple of years. And where we get with the, the mutants. Um, I have a question, Brian. How upset would you be if X-Men is never used in the MCU? The word? The word X-Men. Yeah, I'd be disappointed. Um, the, the, there's a rumor that title's being changed to The Mutants. Now, obviously, there's also X-Men 97, which is the sequel to the animated series. And, and, and at least so far, that is the word is in the title. But if we were to theorize, that the final title removes the word X-Men and they don't ever say that word. And, you know, I think the audience is smart enough to figure out why that might be happening. Um, I'll be very disappointed because I think that, and I, I, I commented to, to, to you over text, I think the, one of the things that makes the X-Men special is the purpose of the characters, why they were created, the time period in which they were created. You know, I think they, that the name and the, the universe really stands for an exploration of society, persecution, acceptance, and inclusion as much as anything in the comics verse. So to shy away from using the actual name, I think would be sad because yeah. that's you know a lot of what I think of in a lot of these stories is that that's what I think is the backbone, what makes the mutant discussion and sort of how they fit into society really interesting and i think this mcu you know we don't know how they're going to pull it off i think it's challenging but i think it's also opportunity because they have an existing universe so how do they work that bias in they also have you know look they have a society and a culture all around them now which where these questions are very relevant maybe you know as, as maybe as relevant for different groups as they were back then or maybe it's some of the same groups but so to me that's like in the hands of great writers that should be fertile ground yeah and then to not you know if you're gonna have these guys in suits with an x and you're gonna have cerebro's door have an x and like there's professor x but you can't say x-men yeah. and i just <laughs> that's sad it's that's not sad. it's not a it's not a it's not a term to me that carries any negative connotation it carries like i said positive messages about yeah inclusion. yeah and we'll end it off on that note. What the hell is going on with 
the X-Men, no, sorry, not with the X-Men, but with uh, the MCU and Kevin Feige and um, where is this all heading to? Uh, I think you heard a very interesting conversation regarding the possibilities of the future of the MCU without Kevin, um, possibly, and, and, and this being his... Uh, his baby and once he's done with that um he might look for other things to do who knows but very interesting concepts and in, in, in discussion um let us know in the comment section below what you guys think will happen what do you guys think with what you what we think about this whole thing um please remember to hit that like and subscribe button we'll see you next time on the nerd gem report